After escaping the simulation, we found ourselves in the Genesis spaceship, which has been taken over and corrupted by Rockwell Prime. He released a bunch of modded monsters onto the ship, from prehistoric tyrants, true behemoths, and freaks of nature. My name is Ark Rector, and I have 100 days to stop this madman's tyranny. I hope you enjoyed this video, and let's get into it. It seemed like Rockwell had a good grip on me, but HLNA was able to gently free me. I looked out of a window and realized I'm not in the simulation anymore. After some eyes looked at me, I hopped into a teleporter and got down to the main ship. There, I was already surrounded by hyenas and massive herbivores. On this map, you start with an unbreakable tech suit with low defense. But with all the benefits, such as a power punch, flight and super speeds, I made a mini meat chibi for this adventure, punched a parasaur to get some hide and meat, I used some crystals I bought from HLNA to make an awesome spyglass, and after some flying around I found a level 174 Taurosaurus and started taming this friendly and large Ceratopsian. Whilst waiting for the second feed, I gathered more materials, cooked some meat in my campfire and played with a stego until he gave me some hide. Whilst gazing at the stars, the Toro tamed up and I named her Sarah. She was able to harvest a bunch of berries and fiber, also performing a roar which scares smaller dinos off. I crossed the river to reach a mission terminal, opened a funny XP box and fought a Bronto. Afterwards I started the mission Slipstream Sweep. Here I got teleported into a part of the ship where I had to sail through some tunnels and do funny tricks. After winning this race, I immediately started crew chase right away. Here I had to jump and climb around with an enforcer, till I reached the finish line. Then started my least favorite race mission, that being Downriver Run. This mission is annoying, to say the least. First off, you are way too slow, the controls are clanky as heck, and your canoe loses HP as soon as you bump into anything. So to anyone who did this mission on Alpha, and your keyboard didn't look like this, I tip my hat to you. Once done, I power punched some metal, crystal, and lastly settled down upon the stone pillar. Next morning, I crafted two modern pestles for spark powder and narcotic, flew to the mountain tops to collect metal, and wanted to look at some supply drops. But whilst on my way there, I flew into a Apatosaurus. He wasn't the biggest fan of that, so I got my stuff back real quick and opened more crates, with no good loot inside them. I then stumbled upon a tech strider with the right modules attached, but I needed some mission completed and meter gel. Back at base, I upgraded to metal tools and made a crossbow, and spent the rest of the day gathering height, meat, fiber, etc. On day 4, I found something quite useful in a supply drop. Fought against an Alpha Raptor, although, can you call this fighting? Hovering above it and shooting arrows into its head. Sadly, it didn't drop anything good. At my thatch platform, I crafted a long neck, trank arrows and rifle ammo. After buying some paste from HLNA, I was able to make a fabricator. And after going on a small trip with Sarah, I ended up in a rather bloody fight with another alpha. He gave me a better pick and crossbow. And as the sun settled down, I knocked down some trees and crushed rocks. I not only fought one, but two Alpha Raptors on day 5. Luring them into the river to slow them down was a pretty good idea, to be honest. Only one of them gave me an even better crossbow. With this weapon, taming creatures would be a lot easier. And after some time has passed, I found a level 174 Gargoylosaurus. A unique cousin of the Ankylosaurus with a bladed tail. Simly flew above her and shot tranks into her. Once knocked out, I crafted a saddle and spike walls, which I placed around her just in case. Now, taming this lady with major berries would take a long time without a bintro, which is this small animal over there. Hold on a minute! I received some flowers from HLNA, tamed the bintro, and named this little bear cat Burger. With his lovely sench, the gargoyle was tamed in no time. I named her power since her tail is similar to a chainsaw in terms of damage type, allowing me to harvest huge amounts of wood. She was also quite strong with her attacks, hitting multiple times. I also started taming this Oxalia, which is a friendlier but also weaker relative of the Spinosaurus. I named him Budget Spino, and he was actually really good with his damage and the ability to heal whenever he ate a corpse. With him on my side, I'd be able to harvest insane amounts of hide and meat. It's only day 6 and I already tamed such useful critters. I spent most of day 7 flying across the Eden biome looking for a female Oxalia but couldn't find any. Opened crates wherever I could and one of them gave me a good mining drill, which would be a huge step up for my resource gathering. I also tamed a cute little red panda and lastly did the very amusing slide and glide race mission. 
amongst the stars and meteor shards of the space biome, I tested out my new mining drill. And with this thing, I was able to harvest an incredible amount of metal. The unique part of the space biome is that every day around midnight, the ship goes into hyperspace. And that means new and different kinds of minerals every day. I spent the rest of the day doing missions. Crew a chase on Beta and Alpha, and the same goes for Slide and Glide. Looking at this level 30 strider, I knew I only needed two more missions and some mutagel. Crafted an upgrade station on day 9 to grind some bad loot. Also made a generator, cables and a S plus nanny for later uses. Spent some time gathering metal in space and then flew around the rivers for a bit. And there I found a high level Australovenator. These fellas are incredible for gathering organic polymer. Placed a trap, lured him inside, quickly knocked him out, flew back home to grab some mutton. There I also crafted an oil pump, got back to the Austri and tamed him up. I named him Pangu and went with him on a little hunt for Hesperonis, since they gave me a good amount of polymer. I continued the hunt the next morning until I found a level 24 text writer with all the right modules that I needed. So I checked the space biome once more, but to no avail. Still no mutagel meteors. I then opened a bunch of supply drops, and one of them gave me a shoulder cannon, which I couldn't use. Anyway, afterwards I flew to Rockwell's garden for the first time. This part of the ship is heavily taken over by Rockwell, and terraformed to his own likings. With giant tentacles, flesh-eating plants, and so much more bad stuff. I simply flew across his property and placed my oil pump. What is Rockwell gonna do? Come after me? I gathered some wood and stone in the morning of day 11, and even tamed a second red panda. Afterwards, I crafted some narcotics, spark powder and gunpowder, and then again spent the rest of the day looking for a female oxalia. On one of these in level actually, got rid of some raptors and other fellas, and tamed her up. Went back home, and introduced the spoons to each other. On day 12, I collected some pearls. A small, little byproduct, however, was mutagel. The stuff I need to tame a strider. I then looked around to find the lowest level strider possible. I started the taming process where I had to hack into its system, but failed on the first attempt. Now I had to wait until it would move a certain amount, but it was kinda stuck, so I punched it and lured it down to this flat area, where I quickly tamed it up and named the Cyber Giraffe Metallica. And it was simply just ludicrous how many resources I was able to collect with him. I was looking around for a future base but and even tamed a high level Maywing which I named Milkman. Maywings are one of the fastest travel mounts in the game and it is really fun to glide around from area to area, but I still preferred my tech suit or actual flyers. After some gliding I decided that this metallic plateau would be my future base bot, which meant I had to move very soon, since my stone pillar got a bit too small for me. On the next day I picked up as much as possible and flew to the new spot. The best ability of the tech suit is that I can still fly even when my inventory is too heavy. I threw my creatures at a future home, placed down some thatch foundation and with forges etc and then started building the base shape of my base. I had to gather wood and stone every now and then for more structures and in the meantime the budget spinos were breeding in the background to get a mating pair that has all the good stats. I will continue this process till the sun went down on day 16. I know I live in a giant spaceship right now, but I simply can't say no to a simple, cozy, rustic house. And I also got a baby oxalia with the good stats. Now I had to go through the very slow and tedious process of moving everything inside. Hopped back to my old base and got the rest. Organized my loot, burned the industrial cooker into one from S+, and moved the breeding area of it. Placed air conditioners there instead of torches and went to Rockwell's garden. There I simply flew around, hoping I could get some loot whilst looking upon some modded monstrosities. I didn't get any good loot, so I checked out my oil pump. Back in Eden, I started another race mission, Star Wing Strike. Here I had to fly through some ventilation tunnels of the ship with a space dolphin. The controls on them are a bit weird since I had to use my mouse to steer them instead of my keyboard. After that I got back to Rocky's porch and fought some insects, which allowed me to collect a good amount of chitin with the help of power. Oh, and I renamed the Goodstead Oxy to Alex and had some fun with her. Imprinted once hit pretty hard, to be honest. With her strength, I mauled my way through this ring, tamed two more Binturongs, one was named Pringles, had another Alpha Raptor fight, and headed down into the underground ocean, primarily to explore it a bit. And down there, I found one of the coolest and probably best base bots. One problem though, Alex couldn't regenerate her stam whilst being underwater, so I quickly made my way out of the ocean and to the land bridge for some reason. There I noticed that the meteors were all shiny. That meant oil, so I let out my inner American 
although I am a German, and gathered as much oil as I possibly could. Brought it all back home and crafted and placed another generator as well as two fridges. I realized that it rains a lot on this map, so instead of connecting this cooker to a lake or river, I placed one of these water tanks. This thing would collect water whenever it rains. I also fought an Alpha Raptor yet again, and this guy gave me an ascended metal hatchet. Then spent the rest of the day running around looking for potential tames, robbed some bees of their honey. Next morning, I added a much needed object to my kitchen, the grill which allows me to cook meat even faster. After that I went on another supply crate run, but got nothing useful. An Alpha Kano dropped better loot than most of the supply crates. Simply grinded all of the loot in the upgrade station, which I will only use to upgrade my gear after day 50. I also unlocked and crafted a sniper rifle for later uses. I went towards the other ring to look for a Cryolophosaurus, a unique carnivore that can deal great amounts of torpor with its cryo liquid. But I got distracted by some cyan crystals on the medias. These things gave me a godly amount of element shards and also some element. After I collected a little bit, I put Metallica to the side and flew to the second ring, hoping I could find a good level cryo. But I found none of those. The search continued till the next day, and there I spotted a max level cryo in a decently safe spot. Tried to get rid of everything around us, but to no avail. Cryos love to attack pretty much everything. I was able to save her from some Carnos and Scorpions, but her shadow main was a bit too much for this cold carnivore. Luckily I spotted another high level one, so once more let's clear this area, place the very simple trap and lured him to me. But he was slowed down thanks to that Capro that he messed with earlier. He reached the trap and and now I had to shoot his mouth while he was performing his ice breath. But of course a Brondu got a bit too close, the cryo attacked it, broke free, I tried to get him trapped again, but he just knocked me out and got rid of me shortly after. Quickly made a personal gravestone to get my stuff back and headed out to tame an Argy. I tamed this level 162 and named him Chromeda. With him, I would be able to pick up cryos and move them somewhere safe. Luckily that one cryo was still alive, so I of course picked him up, moved him to a safer spot and tried it again. I put power on the side of the trap as bait, the cryo tried to freeze her and in the meantime I was able to shoot his mouth until he froze himself, allowing me to feed him some mutton. But from here on everything went downhill, the cryo refused to freeze, he then attacked me resulting to crow attacking him, that got rid of the cryo's taming progress. Oh. And it got worse. Of course it got worse. It happened every now and then where he wouldn't do his ice breath. He would walk away, pour out at one point when he was around structures. This right here proves that Arc Editions isn't the best dynamo out there. Hate me if you want. Anyway, one of the snipers broke, I ran out of ammo, and I was so annoyed with this dino that I literally just killed him. I'm the guy who did a guide on these fellas and I still have trouble taming one. Or I wasn't prepared enough. Anyway, towards the night I found this Giga Titan. If you watched my first 100 days on the island, you know that these giant insects are really good. I knocked her out and tamed her up. Got back to Metallica and proceeded to gather more things. Then made my way home, which took a little while. I left Metallica down on this bridge, grabbed as much as possible, power punched myself into the air and flew to my base. And then did this four more times until everything was organized. Destroyed all the souls in the soul terminal to get a juicy amount of XP and then decided to paint my tech suit. You might know me for these lovely colors or you are new to this channel and you have no idea who I am. Well, my name is Arkrector and it's amazing that you decided to click on this video. If you enjoyed till this point and want to see more, consider to like and subscribe. It really does help me out. Anywho, I needed crystal so I collected some. Whilst looking at the map, look for other spots that might have crystal, I heard a familiar noise. turn around and saw Jester from my previous 100 days on Genesis 1. I had no idea how he managed to get to me, I was still happy to see him nonetheless. I quickly got him back home. Jester was as insane as I recall, capable of inflicting a nasty bleak with his crushing jaws and being able to burn targets down due to the substance within his bloodstream, which inflames itself once it gets in contact with air. This also meant that all his wounds get cauterized, allowing him to heal a lot quicker. We rushed to a mission terminal and started the mission Velonosaur Hunt, followed the footprints and slayed the spiky fellow.
Then we did it on beta right away, the loot was pretty much trash, so I grinded all of it. And after some electronic crafting, I was finally able to make myself a chemistry bench. Day 27, I found this level 174 Apentrius, a pretty large theropod with an even nastier bite than the yellow, so I tried to knock her out without a trap. Which was a mistake, because this turned into a wild goose chase really quick. I eventually had to go back to get more trinks, but before that I opened this drop and got a slightly better long neck. On the way back to the Apentrius, however, I got an even better long neck. The Ark Gods are on my side, at least for once. I found her again and managed to knock her out. Underwater though. Luckily she tamed up quickly thanks to the Binturong. After some loot grinding I was able to make the Industrial Forge, which would boost up the smelting speed by a huge amount. Now the Apentrius was very interesting. She was able to perform a flash sacrifice to increase her speed and damage. But by default her bleeding was insane, especially when the bitten target tried to run away or towards you. After that little test I made some more water tanks and wanted to start with the greenhouse. I then looked in Rockwell's garden for a dung beetle. Saw a level 180 male Giga Titan, but ignored him for now. Found a dung beetle and once tamed named him Mr. Crab. Jess and I had some fun in Rocky's garden with his animals, until I said it's enough, so on the way home, I stopped by that level 180 Mantis and started to knock him out. He eventually fell asleep and tamed up. At base, I told the two Giga Titans to breed, whilst in the meantime I started to actually build the greenhouse and finished it at the end of day 29. I got a good stat male Giga Titan, the others, well, I got rid of them with Pengu for all that sweet, sweet organic polymer. Whilst flying across the upper parts of Eden, I found a male Apentrius and tried to tame him, but he didn't really like the trap I've placed and he eventually got killed by some wolves. I got my revenge and after a little search however, I found another male, but this one was also very stubborn. After a long chase, I almost managed to trap him, but on the other hand, he got a little bite of me. So I had to respawn, organized a bit more, got back to the fella and managed to actually trap him. I think. Anywho, he was just kind of floating, so I just pummeled him with darts. Then searched the Eden Ring for some sheep, gave this one a high five, and got back to the dino with some mutton. I engaged combat with this Alpha Fasolasuchus, since these modded Alphas can give pretty nice loot. Drew a jest and told him to attack while I was shooting at the crocodile. It ran into the water where it was a lot slower. Jester and I took advantage over that and brought it down. Jester is an absolute beast. I received three AC2 loot crates from it, but most of the loot was kinda trash to be honest. I shot a few cool scenes with Jest before flying back home. Once there I told the Apentrius to have some fun, but I also realized that I was in the desperate need of pearls. So I hopped into the ocean to look for an anglerfish, and of course I found a high level one. He fell asleep in the early morning of day 33, tamed up, and he did what an anglerfish did best, gathering pearls and swimming away from danger. Put him away and looked for more pearl locations, but then ended up with an alpha mose on my tail. He munched on me a bit too hard and shortly after I got this lovely notification. I went out to tame a few more binturongs and red pandas since I would always need them. I figured out that these rivers had a good amount of pearls in them. Crafted some more needed items and decided to do the Velonosaur hunt on Alpha. On the highest difficulty he had some insane health, but his thorny dragon minions were even more ridiculous. The last of his minions fell. It was at that point where I realized that two remained, but they were underneath the map. There's no way I could get them. So I had to abort the mission, but didn't want to redo it again. Instead, I did the mission known as Ferox Coal on Gamma, following its footprints, but quickly jumped off Jester and stayed in the air since the Ferox can hit you on your mount and deal a lot of damage. The final phase, I stayed far away from the Ferox and lured his minions to me, one by one. I grinded more insects into paste, got rid of these Carniflora which stood in the sun for too long, and lastly checked on my old pump again. The next day I obtained two Apentria babies, with their good stats. Stole some honey once more, and had this super epic and totally not boring fight with an Alpha Rex. From here on out, I was looking for some UDs to tame, since their eggs are always useful and needed. I found this level 180 and after a good amount of darts, acrobatic jetpack skills and net gun action, managed to knock him out and secure the area. After he was tamed, I fought a second Alpha Rex, but even his damage was a 
bit too much for Jester to handle, so I ran away and allowed him to heal a bit. I swear, out of all the maps, this one had the most alphas. I looked for a female Yuri, but found another model alpha dino. A Torvosaurus. This little bugger proved to be an actual challenge for Jester, thanks to his venom. But we still managed to end his live subscription. Sadly, he didn't drop anything. Last, I found and tamed this low-level female Yuri at the end. Brought her home and told her to lay some eggs. Meanwhile, I hatched my own Apentrius. And since he is all about bleeding, I named him Malekith. Whilst he was growing up for a bit, me and Alex went into the sea and fought a bunch of sharks to get some raw prime fish meat, which I needed to make this, Swamp Boss Kibble, a lovely little taming item which I need later on. Malekith was also fully grown towards the evening, so I took him out on a little leveling run. His imprinted damage was ridiculous, but his bleed was even better. Apentrius are pretty much a hit and run creature. You want that a bitten critter chases you or runs away. Plus his little jump gave him a neat amount of mobility. Only problem is, he had very fragile health. I named to this mantis Kamakura, which will be my main flyer. I know I have a tech suit and all, but having a flying mount with a bit more combat and mobility is a yes for me. I also hopped into the trench to get more prime fish and leveled Malekith using his own kin. Then had some fun leaning the Eden Ring a bit. Leveled Kamakura with some sacrifices as well, and ho oh, ho, he was incredible. IDPS capable of slowing targets with his hair scatter attack and being able to enter a combat stance with more heavier attacks. Was able to bleed his enemies and inflict a debuff called Rent, which stacks up to multiple times and lowers the defensive targets. But after all these fights, I realized I needed a Deodon to heal him and others up a lot quicker. So I looked everywhere. I found this shotgun in a drop, but no matter where I looked, I found no good level heal piggy or any at all. The next day I gave up and tried to tame the snow owl. Now, they can heal as well, but I think deodons are better. Anywho, taming this birdie was annoying to say the least. I do love when the shots don't count or stuff like this happens. Still managed to put her to sleep and tamed her up. I healed up Kamakura with the owl, then did one of the most fun missions out there, Star Dolphin. I had to fly around this tunnel-like arena and collect points by simply shooting the targets. Did that in the first two waves, and after that I flew out of the Genesis spaceship to protect a giant space world from drones, corrupted avatars, the top of ships and meteors. Gotta say, this was by far the most fun mission on this map. Once they were taken care of, enemy Astrodelpha started to appear and attack the whale. In the last phase, everything got thrown at me, which I encountered in the previous stages. After I saved the whale, a familiar face appeared. The master controller showed up. I thought he was bound to the simulation. Anyway, I had to destroy his armor and only then could I be able to deal damage to him. I had to do this three times in total until I finished the mission. On day 41, I prepared myself to hopefully tame a certain dino, crafted more swamp boss kibble and some ghillie gear, and headed towards Rockwell's garden. But my attention immediately focused on these meteors. Red mist means a mutagel, which I needed for the final boss. I went back home to get Metallica, and spent the entire day collecting as much mutagel as I possibly could. I then continued my journey to Rockwell's garden, but on top of the bridge, Malekith got attacked and controlled by a nasty Noglin. That thing slowly drained his health, but once free from that brain slug, I balled him up and got rid of it. I switched my Kamakura to cover more ground easier, and there, in a lake, I found a Dinochirus, a massive territorial omnivore. These giants would be perfect for the boss, and certain missions. Sadly, this thing died thanks to this river monster down here. Luckily, I found another one not far away. Now, to tame one, you need the Swamp Boss Kibble on your last hotbar slot, full ghillie gear, and the Cuddle Buddy buff from a red panda. Otherwise, this thing would shred me to pieces in a second. Slowly walked up and fed her once, and backed up. Now it would take a long time till I could feed her again. Up to 20 minutes, if I'm correct. But I knew my way around this. Put my panda away, picked up my bench wrong, jumped on Kamakura, and simply scooped in to give the Denokairus the hunger buff. Did this over and over until she was hungry again. Soaked my bin to with the panda and tamed up the goose. I killed another Alpha Rex with Malekith and kept on looking for male Dinochirus, but nothing good was found. I placed all the Alpha trophies on the outside of my base for decoration. I also made two beer barrels for some reason, but placed them inside of this building because I wanted them to have a constant water connection. After some more flying and searching, I found a second Alpha for Solasuchus and tried to take it down. Again, threw it into the water to slow it down whilst flying above it with my Mantis. 
but it took forever, so I told my boy to deal with it while it was aggro towards me. One slate, I glazed at the three loot containers I got and opened them one by one. I got some snow pellets, but also this ascendant pistol and mineral saw. I then spent my time collecting mutagel again, since I would need up to 800 to make six mutagen. Now back to the Danukai research. I saw a few decent levels, but not the right gender. Till I found this beauty. I love a 180 male. Got rid of the other one near him. He wasn't the biggest fan of that, so he let out his anger on some carnivores nearby. I simply watched how he wiped the floor with a poor shadow mane. He calmed down afterwards, so I was able to feed him. And did the exact thing I did with the other one. Once he became my friend, I checked out some drops and got a lot of useful crap from it. Hooked up the two giant lovebirds and that's about it. On day 46, I turned regular Trank Darts into improved ones and headed out to do a more unique mission. Parasa Roundup. In this one I had to catch Parasas, but first I had to deal with these carnivores which are part of the mission. Then I had to deal Torpor to the Parasas. Once they had enough, I was able to net gun them. I had to do this in three different rounds until the mission was done. Now the loot from it was just utter garbage. Look! Also started the mission Maywing Pouch right away, just to get it over with. Same kind of mission as the one before, but more annoying. Since the Maywings would try to run away from me, some rare flowers however changed their mind. Still took way too long. Even at the end of the day, I was still trying to finish the mission. At least, I catch the very last Maywing on day 47. Was the loot worth this pain? Ha! No. no. Anyway, I made a bunch of ammo and hunted a mass of Ferox once more. But on beta, he did way too much damage towards Jester and Malekith, so I had to soul ball them up. At least, I had a strategy. And with that, I mean hovering above it where it couldn't reach me and shooting at it. Luckily, Jester would heal up whilst being in a ball, so I threw him out every now and then. In the last phase, I had to use up all my bullets to take this thing down and fought the bears and monkeys with Jester. And the loot was actually pretty good. Day 48 was a pretty chill day. I got a male Danukairus with all the stats I needed, crafted and placed an industrial grinder to specifically grind all the structures I get from missions and drops alike, opened as many supply drops as I could find, grinded nearly all of it, and jumped across the stars for some more mutagel. I still required more mutagel, so I pulled my pants up and headed straight for Rockwell's innards. I personally hate this biome. It's disgusting. Walls of flesh, lakes of acid, giant eyeballs everywhere. Eyes are even on some plants, if you can call them that. Nasty green tentacles which bother you. Summoners and microphages are patrolling this area. It is just a very nasty place you don't want to be in. I made my way down to his heart where the terminal is. Loot on a bit more and picked up some mutagel, which is at the bottom of this acid lake. Once I had enough, I flew out as fast as I could and spotted and tamed a good level piggy. I legally took some honey from the friendly bees, got some items from the loot drops, including this ascendant shotgun, and then tried to find some rare flowers. But bought the rest in HLNA store and used them to craft a beehive. Before heading to Rockwell's site, I had to test out the shotgun's damage, and it was amazing. The only good thing that I got from the drops was this Deodon saddle. After all these days, I was also capable of crafting a tech replicator. But I had to move the interior of my base a bit. I had to replace the forge behind the replicator, but wasn't the biggest fan of, well, this. So I built my way around that little abomination, which made my base look even better. With a replicator, I would be able to turn all of those shards into actual element. And then had to replace the grinder and headed out to the stars once again. Now remember the mineral saw I got? Well, that thing was really, really good for gathering mutagel in large numbers. I left as soon as I had enough and turned all the mutagel into mutagen. Did I mention that the tech replicator is a lot faster when you want to craft pretty much anything? I hatched a very important female goose, choose more violence, told the two good stat Danukairis to have a good time, and went on another loot run. Got this absolute beast of a shotgun, and also hatched a male Danukairis and named him Zod. Not because of the feathers upon his head, but because of those crimson eyes that glow with dread, and a female which I named Casca. Stumbled upon this level 174 Astrodelphus and wanted to tame her. I fed her some element, chased her around a bit till she was tamed, she was named Starfire. But at base I realized I couldn't use her since I only found the saddle and didn't really unlock the tech engram for it. So instead I healed up Zord, settled him up and I gotta say Dino Kairos are absolute units. High health, high DPS, possessing a powerful uppercut attack which sends smaller creatures flying and just in general an all around combat mount. I just slapped, clapped and yeeted creatures left and right. Just to level this guy up. I got surprised by a lovely health mutation on a female 
and on top of that a damage mutation on a male Danokyrus. Put them aside for the nanny to take care of and sacrificed some of the brethren to level Zord even further. Once the mutated ones were fully grown I had to increase the breeding area even more since the damaged male had to breed with a good stat female and of course the other way around on the female with the health mutation. I did not want it to combine the mutations, at least not yet. On the following day I got blessed by the second damage mutation on the goose and poured all the beer from barrels into jars. I needed that beer to tame a Dinotherium. Those imposing towering giants would probably be a good addition for the boss. And after some searching and fighting, I found a level 174 elephant. Lightly asked her friend to leave and load her down onto this metal platform. Taming one of these is rather simple. You need to be on your last hotbar slot, walk up to one, and keep an eye out for certain animations on her face, which indicate if it's safe or not to approach. I made an entire guide on these fellas, feel free to check that one out. She took some beer from me, but around the second feet I got a bit too greedy and she stomped on me. After that I paid close attention to her face, looked her into the eye, and after the last beer she was willing to join me. The entirety of day 75 was spent looking for a high level male Danotherium, and eventually found one at the end of the day. He was literally at the same spot where I tamed the female one, I had to fight some fish cats, got rid of the unworthy elephants, and I had to learn the hard way to never be greedy or impatient whilst taming a Danotherium. Just take your time. I stopped by the oil medias once again and placed the Dinotherium on top of this ledge. Just like Zord, they are units, capable of dealing good damage and also boost themselves and allies with the damage or armor buff, depending if you use a male or female. Day 59, I entered the life support mission. In the first phase, I had to fight a number of enemies and then enter a caller sequence into these towers. The next phase was all about repairing malfunctioning air tanks, while targets would try to attack me, so I let Zord have some fun. Once the time was over, I could enter the third stage of the mission where I had to do everything I did before. So kill enemies, repair air tanks, enter a color sequence, and then just rinse and repeat this two more times. Simple, right? Only problem was, the toxin levels in the air would slowly chip away at my health and I had no healing supplies with me. But I survived till the malfunctioned mech knight and the strider appeared. For the final fight, I had to run away though thanks to some minions of his, but still managed to jump on Zod, defeat the strider and the mech shortly before my health got too low. After that mission, I simply gathered wood and made ammo. On day 60, me and my anglerfish gathered pearls. And I also remembered that I had this tech rifle blueprint, which I got from a drop some time ago. I crafted it, but then I couldn't use it because I didn't have the tech engram unlocked. Apparently Gamma Master Controller on Gen 1 barely gives you any tech grams, so the only reason why I even had a replicator was for generic crafting. Anyway, I still gathered element and shards in space. But the next morning, after some consideration, I used this command to unlock the tech rifle. After all, I found a blueprint and crafted it, so I should be allowed to use it at least. Since it was a tech rifle, its damage and speed was really good. I also got a baby elephant with the needed stats, painted some of my weapons, plus found this tech canteen in the supply crate, and later on proceeded with the Shadow Main Prowl mission. The same type of mission as Ferox, Cole, etc. The best thing about Zod was the fact that he was immune to the Shadow Main's nasty thorn male venom. We cleared the mission so fast that I decided to do it on beta right away. Zod had a lot of fun wiping the floor with those cats, and the loot, not gonna lie, was actually really good. After the mission, I had a clash with another glowy Rex. I used the rifle blueprint towards the evening. Day 62 was kind of annoying. First I made a bunch of utility soups and started the choose your own adventure mission. First phase I had to kill 12 colorful targets and then walk through a gate of the color that showed up the most. Second phase I found myself in a maze where I had to protect myself against hostiles and collect differently colored keys. Walk through the right gate again. But I ran out of time so I tried it again. Same tasks as before but this key in particular drove me insane. I still made it to the third stage and this area was very strange looking. Here I had to step on colored floor plates to get to the next stage. But I'm very rusty when it comes to this mission, I ran out of time once more. On the next morning I prepared myself a bit more and figured out that I could use soul balls within the mission. I did not know that, but I used that to my advantage. Cleared the first stage of the mission and used Jester sometimes to clear my way. Still felt the mission cause I did not pay attention to the time. So here we go again. Cleared the first and second phase of the mission a bit faster. Now I knew what I was doing. The glide suit was basically God's gift for the third stage. Stepped on the final plate 
walked through the green door and was greeted by the macro summoner boss. I threw a jester and had to walk over two types of colored four plates once again to destroy the shields of the smaller summoners and took them down. Now I could attack the macro summoner and I had to repeat that process two more times again. All whilst VR enemies could try to attack me, so just had some fun in the background. I filled the summoners with some bullets and took him down for, for the good. The loot was utter trash, however. Crafted some useful ammo, got another baby elephant, and went on a little meat run with Malekith. It was almost 10pm when I finished Star uh, Wing Strike on Beta for no reason at all. I made more soups and entered one of my favorite missions on the ship. First off, I had to walk through the small maze, and after I mauled my way through pretty much everything, I shot some more turrets and left Zord behind, whilst entering the ventilation system of this room. Here I had to fight some insects and destroy more turrets. But at one point, I threw a jester, because the air fans got on my nerves. At the end, I fell down in this room filled with defense units, which I had to dispose of. Once disassembled, I clicked this button, took the elevator down to Zord, and had to wait at this door whilst an entire weak army was thrown at me. I walked through the door and into the next room. Here I had to protect these bio pots and wait till the time was over. It doesn't matter how many pots get destroyed, as long as one remains, you'll make it to the next round. Speaking of which, he had to go through two rooms and activate a terminal. Ate my soups, clicked it and ran back to the entrance. Had to do the same thing in the other room as well. I pushed the last button, Zod and I walked through the hallway and entered the final stage. Here we had to fight the experimental Giga Nodosaurus, one of Rockwell's many children. Remember the biopods I had to protect? Well, all of the remaining ones joined me in this battle, and we took this monster down. Good on ya. That did the trick. It's kinda hard to believe while I'm writing this script. And I started the Survive the Ark mission right away on the next day. Ten waves, in each I got swarmed by various dinos from different arcs or biomes. The first one I fought the island and just poked everything that went after me. Bought the tech pistol between the first and second wave and this pistol is the best thing I've ever used. Simply hold down left click to deal increasing damage to your enemies. Now stage 4 had aberration dinos, but the best strategy I came up with was to use the glide suit. Circle above the targets and hold down left click. The reapers stood no chance that way. I also bought some mantis to aid me in the fight. You can just buy dinos to fight for you in this mission using the score points. Anyway, all the waves were the same. There was like one titanosaur in one. And even Genesis 1 and 2 dinos, but me and my random dino army stood tall. The final stage, however, was rather funny. So the targets were fire spitting zombie dodos and their big brother, the Dodorex. Me and my army finished the fight. I celebrated and headed out of the mission. The loot was absolute dog water. Like, what is this? Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no. The morning of day 67, I got blessed with a third damage mutation on my Dinochiris and raised another baby Dinotherium I named Gameth. Crossed the space bridge for resources and looked for more crystal. I crafted and upgraded flag armor as much as possible because I wanted to try and beat Survive the Ark on beta. On this difficulty, I did Wayless damage and failed this attempt twice. But the third attempt looked really smooth, even if my VR LOs would constantly perish. Anyway, everything seemed fine till wave 8, since now shadow mains would appear and just ruin my main strategy. They yoinked me out of the air way too often, I got immobilized and shredded to pieces. After that, I just said, okay. Get about the idea to fight Rockwell on beta, because that was the whole reason why I tried this mission on beta. Since I still had so much time and only one more mission to go. After that tragic realization, I started and finished Star Dolphin on beta, he's just to relax a bit. Down, but he's not taking us with him. Once it was 9 p.m., I would also be able to start the third capture and the last mission, Bob Dog Fetch, just like Parasa Roundup fight some enemies and try to capture the targets. But this one proved to be quite the pain in the neck since I had a very small time window to deal Torbor. And the ping also shot up for no reason. But I still tried and managed to knock out as many as I could within the small time. Even if shots wouldn't count sometimes and even with the help of Kamakura to slow them down. The problem with this mission is that I only have till 5am in game. Once it reaches that time, the mission automatically stops. In the last round, all the targets were underwater, which made it even more annoying to knock them out. So I failed the mission. 
I prepared myself for the next attempt, raised some more Dinotheriums, leveled up my boy Gameth for a little bit and tried Bob Dog Fetch once more. I used a nice little strategy from my buddy Chromeda. I simply placed a tent on top of the Bob Dogs and knocked them out. With this method, it was a whole lot easier to knock them out, trust me. And I only had two more Bob Dogs to knock out in the last round, but still failed because I was surrounded by too much danger. The main reason why I wanted a Cryolophosaurus back then was for this mission in particular. Anyway, I upgraded my long neck rifle to the highest tier, and here we go again. But on this third try, everything went a lot better, and I managed to capture the final Bob Dog in the early morning of day 73. With this, I finished the last required mission for Gamma Rockwell. And it felt good. So now there wasn't much left to do, to be honest. I healed up my elephants towards the end. I dared on had some pet food kibble, which restores food a lot quicker. One of the few things that are worth mentioning is that I knocked out and tamed this level 180 Sodorosaurus. For the fun of it. She was a pretty solid medium mount. Harvest berries, but also flint. So early on, on a different map, this lady would have been a pretty good addition. Throughout the entirety of day 75, I tried to beat Star Dolphin on Alpha. Hold on, hold on. Try to open the firewall. But failed every single time. Open However, I reached the space whale part, but it didn't survive long enough. Whilst I was doing pretty much anything, the Dinochirus were constantly breeding in the background to hopefully get more mutations. Surprised I didn't get any more. In the meantime, I explored the landscape, opened loot drops, and that's about it. I also managed to knock out this level 174 Quetzal and tamed him up for no reason or purpose. Named him Mr. Blue Sky, he was literally just a trophy tame. Then tamed this Gorgosaurus and named her Tyranna. She was a pretty decent mount with a good bite, a shoulder bash that deals no damage, probably just a glitch, and a nice roar. She had a tank saddle which protects the rider from turret damage. Once more, she would have probably been a really good mount earlier in this adventure. But from here on, nothing interesting happened. And I just laid back and took my time. Leveled up my elephants because I wouldn't go for mutations on them, combined the Dinochirus mutations, and around day 93 I raised my army and named all of them after random people who wrote a comment under my previous 100 days. I leveled my army for two whole days, and also healed them up. Until day 99, I did the last preparations did only some small things on day 99, such as naming this red panda, giving her a cool helmet, also gave myself a cooler looking helmet, just made more and more healing supplies and ammo. Once it was day 100, there was no going back. I flew over into Rockwell's innards and carefully placed my army, the Dinochirus for their insane DPS and the Dinotheriums for the buffs. I was also really nervous whilst placing the creatures onto the platform. I activated the terminal and teleported into the command center of the ship. Rockwell access. took full control over this part as well. In the event of emergency and a colonist revives early, blah, blah, blah. I clicked on the small yes. icon and HLNA opened the gate in front of us. This part was unnerving. Just seeing Rockwell's heads on the wall talking to me. This is where you fall to your knees just like all the other ones. Please, no, I don't want to die, etc, etc. This walk could have been a lot cooler if I didn't get stuck on my army all the time. After some untangling, we proceeded the walk. I threw out the last two elephants, failed to walk through the gate, but still got teleported by the game. Once there, Rockwell was nowhere to be seen. So we just mauled our way through the tentacles. My army probably destroyed the super tentacles, which awakened one of Rockwell's meat puppets. But they barely took any damage from us. And Rockwell just laugh at that. <laughs> Your weapons are pitiful against me! You are nothing but an ant trying to bite at the toes of a god! So HLNA had a little surprise for me, an Exomech, which I had to use to destroy the nodes. Once destroyed, Rockwell released his crew, and I got kicked out of the mech. I ran away and jumped on Zord again. Summoners would also show up from now on. But my mighty monster still flattened everything until the second node was released. You're only making it worse for yourselves! It wasn't even a minute till the third node was exposed. But those stupid little minions of Rockwell wouldn't leave me alone. Once the third node got destroyed, Rockwell started to insult me. Ah, that's who you are. You're vermin. 
Rodents nipping at my ankles. I heard some desperation in his voice as soon as the final note was vulnerable. Final chance to grovel. Maybe you can reach some last morsel of human compassion deep inside me. Zord and I cleared the area. I jumped in the mech and grilled the remaining note. No, 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 not you, no. You insist on surviving and making a nuisance of yourselves. After I heard some more insults and gibberish, I finally saw where Rockwell was the entire time, at the very front of the room, and he looked hideous. attention, and this, this is where your little game comes to an end. I whistled my entire army towards him and gave him everything we got. He colored the floor so I backed off just in case, but some of my army took massive hits. He took some more hits and collapsed. He yelled at me that this won't be his end. I will not allow you to spoil my ascension, my goodhood. But I took the mech and lasered him to end his nightmare. Even after all that, he was still holding onto his life. Thanks to an explosion, I got thrown out of the ship. I don't know if I can survive this, but at least it's over. If you enjoyed this journey and you want to see more, don't forget to like and subscribe. Have an amazing day, and I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye. Why are you still here? Staying behind to gloat? Edmund, I'm here to help you end this nightmare. You did this to me for wanting the same power she squandered. Well, I've survived worse. I promise you, I will find a way out of this, I will. No, you won't. It's much too late for that. It's so bright. Helena? I'm afraid. Shh. She knew.